that the threads of our life, and you know, were even, even the scripture says, were knitly formed together in the 139th Psalm. So I want to make this clear. This just is really important for everyone. You are loved of the Father if you have called upon the name of Jesus. He said, more numerous than the sand of the sea. I think there's 450,000 grains of sand. I actually looked it up. You know, in a palm full of uh, standard beach size sand. More numerous than all the sand of the sea are God's thoughts towards you. Well, some of you are probably going, you know, I can maybe come up with one or two things I like about my life and maybe 300 I hate. But you see, you see you as you are. You don't see you as he sees you. And the scripture is is given to us to let us know, behold, I love my children. And God is infinite. Therefore, his thoughts, his intents, his desires for our good are infinite. You think God's got a multiple choice thing in, in heaven? He goes, well, I'm limited to this one. You know, leave them, take them, or bless them. Yeah, no, 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 no. As unique as each one of us is, and here's the thing I wish I could get across. I've never said this before in my life. But each one of our lives is a reflection of eternity because there is no, uh, uh, and I know there are twins, I'm not talking about that, but even twins have a separate identity, and even though they look alike and can share the same pain, my mother was a twin, when her pregnant uh, uh, twin sister went into labor, my mother went into labor, my mother was not pregnant. The thing is, is that twins share a commonality, they share a bonding, but in Jesus we are all, I say this, allowed to access through the gift of redemption, through the living God, a miraculous plan for our life that basically is more numerous than the sand of the sea. In other words, it's, it's, you can't count it. You can't even quantify it, but you can't believe and receive it. And that's what I want everyone to leave tonight with from my time on. Not, you know, obviously you've got other guests coming on, but that God really does love us. And we are as, how should I say this? To be an infinite reflection of him as we yield even the simplest things to him. And, you know, I'm 66 going on 67 this year. And, man, Doug, I can tell you this. I, 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 if I look back, and by the way, you know, people say, well, you know, I age gracefully. I don't. I'm saying SQ does not. And, you know, and I mean, um, thank God for Pastor John Kyle that gave me the scripture where God said, you know, I will be with you in your old age, you know. And I, I, I just go, Lord, this is such a dilemma. We're not supposed to be here. It was never meant for man to die. But sin produce that. So I'm learning to live with the aging process. But I also know this, Doug. The speed limit is for those that want limits. And I'm not suggesting everybody go out and break the law or do anything that will get you arrested. But you can't put the speed limit on God. You've got to say, Lord, I'm yours. I have no clue what I'm doing in life. Or if you do have a clue, but direct me to wherever you will. And that's what's important. Because here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. The electromagnetic net with 5G will be the ultimate net, which there will be no escaping apart except through the blood of Jesus. And for the Christians and for the followers of the living God, you are not the same as Muhammad. The guy that parades around as the anti-pope is not speaking for God. It wouldn't be it wouldn't surprise me, you know, if he came out and announced that he's converted to Islam, or it, it would not. Right. But the point is this, and I love my Catholic brethren. I love everybody that loves Jesus, okay? But I'm not giving anybody a pass, you know, especially, quote, evangelical guys on TV that are still pitching their wares and basically uh, worried about uh, their sustaining their ministries when they forgot whose ministry it was in the first place. So, Doug, God bless you. Once again, thank you, everyone. I, 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 there's no words I have in my heart to say. Thank you, because I can tell you this, there was no mental stress I've ever known greater than hearing my wife in pain on morphine. They can't give me any more after a certain point, and not one person would listen, not one, not one in a hospital, in a setting. Not one would take her word for it. It had nothing to do with her hip. It was her eyes. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, I got a really wonderful interpretation.
discussion of what that whole thing was about. It's not, you know, I'll send it to you, Doug, but it's not for public. But God bless you, Beta. Beta, thank you for sending that to me. But again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Doug, bless you. And please take this step to the Lord in prayer. It's not true because I say it. It's true because it's true. And if I get to carry the truth, then that's based on my fact that I have been faithful to carry the truth up until this point. And, you know, when, when people say, my last statement, you've never been right, you tell me who uh, was writing about this stuff 25 years ago outside of science fiction writers, and there were some. But to the Christian community, nobody even cared. When the Nazis were into their spiritism and Dietrich Heydrich and, and all the others who were deep in the Ananerbi and the occult, the Thule Society, everything that made Germany in those days seek answers from the occult, I literally had a very, very prominent special operations general tell me that he said, Steve, go watch the movie Hellboy. And in that movie, and I'm not telling people to watch it, I'm just telling you what he said. He said, what you see there was the actual, listen to this, the actual recreation of the first Nazi Stargate that they were able to, if you will, spiritually and mechanically, electromechanically, open up. Now, I don't recommend people see the Hellboy, but in 1947, that's the same year that we were at war with the Nazis in the South Antarctica, where their flying machines destroyed ours. And remember, the Germans themselves made the same statement, that it wasn't that they were brighter than the scientists in the West, it's that they had spirit help and supernatural help from other dimensions. When you see the man of Dr. Werner von Braun's uh, caliber of genius and intellect making that statement, it's time that people wake up and understand this. And again, here's, here's what is critical. For all those of you wondering why Tom and I are talking about this with Doug Hagman on this night, which is whatever, the 28th of November, 2016, is God said his People are destroyed for lack of knowledge. People have tried to spiritualize that. They've tried to conceptualize it. They've tried to marginalize it. They flat out deny it. But notice this, Tom, you made a statement. The occultists believe more in the Bible, not, not in redemption or in Jesus, obviously, that, but they do understand. They know how this plays out. I once saw a Satanist with horns implanted in his head up in Kalispell, Montana. Actually, it was Whitefish, and he had a T-shirt saying, you're, and I think I said this on a show years ago, but had, the T-shirt simply said this, Christian, your time, Christians, your times are coming. And so, you know, obviously direct threat and implied. The blood of the innocents is so critical to these festering pustules of satanic wickedness that it has to be, again, primary and in, in, in front of everybody, what is happening? In Acapulco, right now, used to be the, you know, party capital of Mexico. The drug cartels are now resorting to, guess what? Beheading people and cannibalism and taking out hearts. Gee, that, uh, you know, Tom, don't you and I look at a bunch of codexes from the days of the Aztec and Inca and Maya, and what do they show? People taking out hearts. So this whole ritual symbolism that's taking place in Hollywood, I, I don't think you know the gentleman, but he's listening to the show tonight, I would guess. He told me that he, and he's a producer of pretty big movies, I mean, you know, uh, really big movies. He says, Steve, I can't even sleep in the city. I have to go out in the valley and said, I have to put a Bible open, claim God's protection, cover myself with Jesus. His words, he said, it's not who is involved in Satanism, it's who isn't. And he said, if you aren't, you basically are booted out, and, and by the grace of God, there are Christians in Hollywood that are trying to make a difference, and actors and actresses, but to a large extent, the whole thing has been given over. So why this is critical is every thought formed, all the illumination the globalists, the, uh, uh, if you will, telepresence of hell. And let's just, you know, I still think it would have been better to call it hellavision, H-E-L-L-A vision versus television. Or, uh, you know, if you look at, uh, like, Costco, I looked at the top 100 items being sold on Black Friday, and what an appropriate name, okay? And the deal is, is that I think 55 of the top 
items were all television sets, okay? I'll just start calling them what I nicknamed them. But what's fascinating, I want to throw this out. You know, when we were being even in, in what would you say, indoctrinated in the world of television where basically Marshall McLuhan said uh, the medium is the message. It's not that the message will be carried by the medium. Imagine this. I'm going to leave you with this. I, I won't go any deeper right now. But imagine when all of those people are so enamored with their television sets when the announcement, the enunciation comes on and each man hears these entities in his own language and the television sets will open up to be portals.